finally. Alright, sorry for the delay if you guys are bouncing back and forth. I certainly apologize for that. So anyway, we are drawing Jason Voorhees today from Friday the 13th. And uh, I'm using Krita. It is a free freeware software program for drawing. And I'm using an XP pen tablet. And the first thing I do is I have, you can see over here, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but you can see this. Uh, you can look over here at the layers to the right, and you can see the background, and then you can see two layers on top of that. I'm not sure if you can see my pen, but um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Anyway, I did a black, excuse me, I did a black background, and we are going to draw on top of that. So I'm going to come over here, and when you draw it, you're going to want to use the color that you can see. Let me get my paintbrush. Select my paintbrush. First of all, back that size down. That's too small. That's too big. Yeah, it's too small. Let's try it there. Opacity, I want lighter opacity. Opacity means can you see through it or not? How transparent is this thing? And for my brushes, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select a brush. Um, let me see here. I like to use um, use a pencil. Uh, we're going to use a pencil lead. 2B, 2, uh, excuse me, yeah, 2B here in Krita. Oh, that's a pretty big thing. Oh, in Krita, when you're using it, it will reset uh, when you change brushes. I don't need that. I'm going to use my mouse to set this. So some of it's still getting used. To, I mean, I've used this before, obviously, but some of it's just getting used to the quirks of your own individual uh, software. Um, I like Krita; it's pretty good. Uh, I don't like um, don't like uh, GIMP at all. Well, the first thing when I do when I start a drawing is I want to get a gesture. I want to get uh, energy into the drawing, and instead of just start pounding away at details, so. Let's do Jason. It's kind of, he's very stiff. So it, when I'm talking about gesture drawing, he's not going to be the greatest thing in the world. Oh, let me switch over my layer. You can see over here on the right hand side of the screen, I got layer one and layer two. And um, I'm going to, my layer two, you can see, was my background layer. And then um, uh, my background layer, you can see. And then on top of that is where I'm going to do my sketching. So let's go over here, see if I can get some. Eh not getting any kind of got that got on my layer one yeah we can see it pro oh the reason we're not seeing anything is because I don't have a color that's worth seeing so we're gonna go with a green for right now because that is what I'm okay there we go now we've got something going on so roughly what I'm gonna do is just kind of start with a we're gonna get Jason's torso in here and he kind of he doesn't really hunch. He stands kind of tall. I mean, he can hunch a little bit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make him kind of standing back. I mean, he's usually looming over people, not crouching. He's kind of in control of the whole situation. So I'm gonna sketch in his chest. And Dino says we are uh, shared to the horror group. Thank you. We'll see what happens. So that's Dynamite Tree. She's in here watching. She's shared to the horror group. So I'm basically sketching in the body parts here. We've got, that's his spine back there, you see? Here's his sternum, kind of here. It's where his ribs are coming up. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be rendering any of this or <laughs> drawing it. Completely. I'm just getting my, getting my, my stuff in shape here. Here's a, basically his hip bone, uh, hip, well, I shouldn't say his bone, hip bones. Um, it's just, it's his hip area. I'm getting that basically where I want it. His legs are going to come out down here. And I, whenever you're sketching like this, this is the time where you get to mess around a little bit, where you figured out what feels good, what feels right. So before I even do any detail, I'm just going to put this in here. Probably going to have his legs kind of like that. He's going to have a wide stance. Yep. And if any of you got any questions, let me know. We're going to be having a good time here drawing Jason. 
and I've got a reference um, sometimes I use a reference sometimes I don't um, but anyway we're gonna right now we're gonna do this and I've got kind of his hips kind of in here where I like them we're gonna probably make them a little smaller and not because he's small but because you'll see in a little while I want him his upper body to be bigger because this is more of the illusion of him being a big buff force of nature destructive thing and what we're gonna do we've got his body tilted away from us kind of here so as you know I'm gonna race this but his body's pointing that way but what I'm gonna do is kind of a fun thing old portraiture technique well his body's pointing away from us his head is gonna be looking at us and I'm gonna have a get a feel for where I'm putting his head in here so he's kind of his head is actually kind of down looking right at us while his body's bladed slightly we'll get those in here there's where his, his arms are going to be he's going to have his machete down here I don't mean to sound pretentious saying machete or whatever his, his big old machete that we all love so much we're going to get to that in a little while um, you know what? No, I want to make a decision about that machete right now because anytime you're drawing something, you want movement and energy in the drawing, and I just don't want to stick the machete in there. I want to have it. It's useful, um, meaning I can I can do something with it to help basically uh, bring some interest into the into the drawing. Maybe some extra movement that doesn't have to be that, that isn't going to be. Um, him just holding it while that's okay let's do something a little different I'm gonna have it over here I don't know if Jason's left-handed or right-handed and probably whatever hand that he wants to be anyway machete's gonna go yeah that is I don't like that either but anyway that's okay we can I'm gonna use my eraser I'm gonna go down here and see if this works nope okay go down and grab my eraser and just go back over here and uh, for right now, we're leaving it just the way I had it in the first place. Sometimes the first option is the best option. So we're going to have his... What do I do here? Oh, it went back to 10, which isn't too bad. I got a nice little line out of it. No, hands, okay. That's a layer. We got a layer there. And we've got his basic skeleton kind of worked in here. And before I move on, you know what? I'm going to make his head a little smaller. And the reason I'm making his head a little smaller is Jason is huge and one of the things we do instead of drawing him completely realistic when we're doing something like this we take some liberties when you're drawing superheroes or villains or whatever we can make their heads a little smaller a little bit different gives the gives them what they call heroic proportions and uh, so we're gonna have that and so this is where his hockey mask kind of thing so then we're going to work on our second layer. This is roughly where we're going to have it. I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to go back to this layer for a minute. And I'm going to tone it down. I'm actually going to make the layer itself, if I remember how to do this, the layer itself, properties, opacity, that layer itself is going to be kind of a little bit lighter. So you see I backed it off a little bit. Now the next layer I'm going to do over here, because I'm going to actually just start doing some drawing, some actual blocking in of uh, what I want. And there's different ways to do this. Now a lot of times you see comic artists, they do this kind of sketch, then they do another pencil sketch on top of it, they tighten it up, then they'll do like an ink on it or something like that. That's if you're doing a comic book, and I have nothing wrong with comic books. Um, I am going to do that, and then but then I'm going to add another step in here that people don't normally do. And this is where we're going to zoom in a little bit and start working some details. And we might as well start on the head. How about that? And I might use a slightly, I'm going to kind of go with some blue. This helps me um, sort things out a little better when I'm doing this. So I'm going to back off the size of my, uh, okay, oh, she shared, Dino just shared it with her sons. So maybe they'll watch it. Anyway, let's get in here to the head. Now we made some of our decisions earlier with a slight sketch. Now we're going to come in here and I'm going to tighten this sucker up. Now we, we got some pixelation. That's okay. Oh, wait a minute. I want this a lot darker. And I, 
think I'm going to use a different pencil. I'm going to go for, oh yeah, the number two. I got back down into the, um, maybe I had to do a number two. I got down, golly, there it goes again. Watch your Krita because it will change size as soon as you change the brush. So basically, I'm going in here. Yeah, I don't want that. That's not what I want. I want something a little bit. I got my opacity here. So first thing we're going to do is start with Jason's most obvious feature. It's his damn hockey mask. closely at my eyes what you're gonna see sometimes is they squint that's intentional a lot of artists do this because what they doing is it kind of gives you a way of backing off from your picture a little bit without backing off from it I don't know if that makes any sense sometimes you want to see it from a distance and you want it to you know you want to be able to almost simulate if you're backing up and looking at it now I'm looking at a picture of Jason's hockey mask here and I'm gonna I guess he's had different ones through here I don't know for sure um, I am a fan, but I, you know, the details of Jason's mask are not something that I know a ton about. And I'm going to bump this up a little bit, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going over here to Krita, and I am going to change my, um, I'm going to change this, change my brush to something a little different. Let's see what I get here. Now, basically, I'm going to take some exaggerate, I mean, some, some jack, some liberties too here. I'm getting this is what I want. I want to back off on my opacity so I can sketch a little bit. I get make a little bit more deliberate line without worrying about it. Put in these masks, these hockey eyes. And they, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, they're going to be, um, he's got the bottom of the mask here. We might extend that a little bit. Just kind of indicating and we know that he's got all the dots in here and it looks like he's got two over here he's got a couple over here you see this is also putting his dots in helps me give some roundness to the mask then he's got several across his face putting those in for right now. Oh, I did that wrong. Let me back that up. He said, what did you do wrong? Well, I didn't follow the... Well, I didn't mean to make fun of you. Like, I didn't follow the contour of the mask like I should have. That should be more like this. Now, I'm not, I don't have to necessarily draw every single dot yet. We're going to get back to that. We're just kind of doing these as placeholders. Then he's got some red marks that are going to come in here but we're still we're tightening up our sketch okay but we're still not completely rendering the thing yet because there is a step that I like to add in here that isn't quite it's not the norm and I like doing it so here we are we're drawing Jason's let me pull this out down here a little bit let me show you something I'm bringing the collar here Okay, and I got the chin down here. I don't want those lines to run together. That's called a tangency, and it can be confusing when you're drawing. Now I'm going to back up, and I want to get loose again. Kind of tighten his head a little bit. We might even put some skin above there. Now he always wears that big shitty jacket. So we're going to start drawing that thing. It's going to be kind of, this is where we get real loose and have a lot of fun. Backs up over here. Got shit coming down here. Got his tore it up thing. I'm just going to go real messy with this. And again, not only do you draw it, I mean, you don't want to sit it's something like this, chaotic. It's just This is, not to sound like a, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, I don't like that. Hang on. It's not being where I want it. Not to sound like a hippie or anything, but when you're drawing something, you're drawing a nice loose coat, you're drawing a or something like that that's loose. Usually, use loose lines. Don't over worry it. If 
you're drawing something detailed, go in there. Don't draw, you know, trying to do the contrast with that. Some of the things you draw loose, some of them you draw tight, and there's a reason for that. Not everything has to be meticulously detailed. Now, some people love that kind of thing, but I think it works better on the, whenever you're doing something raggedy, draw raggedy. When you're doing something precise, draw precise. Just, and it, I don't know, that's me. Um, it helps keep a certain energy into it. So his jacket's over here. Let's back up a little bit and see what we got. Oh, yeah. In Krita, it'll back up, and then you have to go down here to the bottom and the side and recenter your material. So we're getting this. going to have his sleeve down here. Again, I'm staying loose because I want that to be loose and I'm drawing what they call indicating. I'm just kind of indicating where everything's going to go. This is going to help me out. So now, what does he wear under this thing? Let me take a look. Probably just a shirt. Yeah, just some kind of old nasty shirt. I don't think Jason goes to, you know, I don't know where you guys go to the Gap or whatever the hell it is. Walmart. Probably goes to Walmart. That's where I get my stuff. Walmart can pay me for that endorsement. Kind of not going to do a lot of detail on his hand yet. We're just putting that in there. And I messed that up. And I want you to see me mess up. You know why? Because you're going to. We all do. Every artist does. Anyone that tells that they don't is lying. Their feet stink and they don't love Jesus. That's where Jason's. I'm going to do a little eraser here. Eh, no, not really. You don't need to right now. And I'm going to kind of do exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. The machete's going to be right over here. One nice thing is we should have a line tool. There it is. And I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to draw. I'm going to. Where's my line? Yeah, there it is. I'm going to draw a straight line coming out. That helps me as a reference. We got that. Because I could spend all day here trying to get this exactly right. And we ain't got all day. But I can. I got that. I can put the edge of that blade there when I'm ready to. So I've got things kind of blocked in here. We're going to do the bottom of his shirt down here, the rest of his jacket. I'm going to worry about his legs later. But he's kind of a dark, I mean, he's not a whole lot of um, colors in his wardrobe, I don't think. And that is a little bit wrong. I don't want a tangency here, but I got my knuckle coming right out. Um, so I'm going to do something a little more creative. Here we go. Again, a tangency is when you would have two lines that don't belong together match up. And um, let me show you what I'm talking about with a tangency. And I'm going to erase this. Let's say you've got a circle here. And this is how they do it in math. And then, okay, now you're drawing, you drew a circle. Now there's some other element back here. Let's say you're drawing... Um, something behind this circle. Now, the way you should do it is like this. We're going to draw an object behind the circle. Okay? That's the way you should do it. Now, a tangency is when you would do this. Basically, those lines would touch. You have that right there. You don't want that. That, that, that feels wrong. So we're trying to avoid any of those kind of lines in our drawing. And I don't mean that to sound too technical or anything like that. Most artists do that completely naturally without even knowing it. I did it. I mean, everybody does it. I think you might even do it. But it's just one of those things to become aware of. Sometimes you might stumble into it and you're like, what the hell? Why does this do the thing I think it's going to do? Oh, let me get back to my brush. And get on my eraser. Where's my pencil? Here he is. And I'm back to 10. Okay, we'll get back
back here. So here's our rough, our, getting our rough Jason. Eh, gotta get that bigger. Here's our rough Jason in here. Why am I not getting, oh, I think I need some more. Oh no, I wasn't using that one. I was using the uh, precision ink, sorry. Okay, that's why I'm getting the strangeness. All right. That opacity up. Okay, back that size down. So I've got my rough, another even, it's not a complete sketch yet. I've got that roughed in. I know where things are going to go. Now, why is that important? Why do I need to know where things are going to go? And I'm going to show you here. I'm taking a different step that's kind of an old fashioned painting step, but it works really well. And I'm just going to make a few more things in here to kind of establish what I'm doing so I don't forget. Put some crud on him in a little while, but we got some, we've got him basically blocked in here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer because you know how I love layers. We're going to start doing some coloring, but we're like usual, we're going to go back to layer three and we're going to do properties. We're backing off our opacity because I'm going to fade out a little bit but we've got our drawing here and we've got them roughed in maybe I don't know if you guys can see that let me um, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing let me pull this back up let's do that so it makes it easier for people to see because what I'm seeing on my screen what you might be seeing that could be two different things and I don't want I don't know I haven't watched them let me see let me go look on the twitch feed here and it's hard to tell but, um, okay, anyway. Ah, we're drawing some shit. All right. Now, here's the, my, the part I like. Again, I think he said Jason doesn't have a ton of different colors in his palette. In fact, it's going to look better if we use a muted palette with him. Normally, I would set up a palette beforehand, and I don't want to do that right now. Um, because we're doing something, we're not, we're not, uh, this is quick. You don't want to be sitting there watching this tutorial forever. He's got a brown coat. He's got a black shirt. He's got, um, you know, a tan. It was a, at one point a white hockey mask. Now it's tan. Um, so we're going to be doing, working with that. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to get me a brush. And what I want, what I really, really want, I want something We'll see all my brushes. Oh, here we go. Erasers, effect, ink, paint. Whoa, cool. I didn't see. Look at over here. You see, I've got all these different categories and going to paint. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Now, I want a wash or something. I don't want a. Let's try this glaze. Hopefully, the. Oh, gosh, I hate when they do that. Well, anyway, we'll go with this glaze. This is kind of the idea that I want. I'm going to be doing an underpainting. And I want this up like this. And I want very light opacity. Okay? Because we're going to be going over and over this. Not in a bad way. Not like, oh god, you know, we're not in a bad thing. We're going to be working it. Working it up. And uh, I think I'll stick with this. And now we're going to get a color for Jason's thing. I'm going over here to my color picker. And I'm going to start with kind of a light start with this. Now I think that's going to be good for the, the basics of his hockey mask. Now, we're going to go over here. Again, if you got any questions, chime in. You can always send them to me. Oh, let's do another layer. Make sure I, I'm going to just throw another I'm not sure if that's the layer or not. I'm throwing another layer on here. Let me see if we got some. Oh, good. Okay. Probably bump this up a little bit so I don't have to press so hard. I'm going to start I'm underpainting. I am putting colors in here before I put detail on. And that's what I want. Blocking in color. I'm going to show you how this all works. And I'm kind of loose with it right now. I'll be able to blend and do other things with it later. And we're getting some interesting effects with it, with you know, kind of appearing to mix with the background. It really isn't, but the background.
background's definitely influencing what we see here. Or I could use an artistic term. The background is informing the foreground. And that sounds pretentious, but uh, I wanted to show you, even though I wear a ball cap and I live down south, I can still I can talk art with the best of them. So I'm getting my mask blocked in in there. Okay. We'll be messing with that a little later. Doing some other stuff with it. We're going to be putting highlights and shadows on it before you know it. Now I'm going to wrap this sucker like this because we're going to have the light coming from over here. So I'm not really worried about shading right now. I'm leaving myself some clues. So when I do get into doing the shading, I'm on the same track as I was before. So we got our got our basic block in for our our mask. Okay. And uh, let me block pull this out a little bit. Basically, the mask is where I want it. I'm going to get the coat. Eh, I, we got to do something a little different. Um, and this is where style comes in. I wanted to give Jason, I got green going on here, and I like the green. And what I want to do, I'm going to get me a nice, disgusting, sick, puke, ugly green for that coat. I'm kind of always when I'm doing these underpaintings, I kind of try to start with a mid, a mid, uh, a mid value, um, or I should, yeah, a mid, a mid type. Color. Well, it almost looks like this coat's brown. It's going to be green brown, I think. I, I'm sure he changes coat colors in the movies. Almost certainly does. We can go over here and do it like that. No, I want to do green, like an army pissed off. Not pissed off army, but like a gross army green. We got green going on in the back anyway. And there's a reason I chose that. Green's the easiest color to see when I was sketching. I mean, it's the easiest color for a human eye to pick up in a lot of cases. Not in every one, but let's get in here and start blocking in some coat here. So, basically, I say that too much, basically. I want more opacity. This is Again, I'm going loose here, and I don't want a lot of precision, okay? I want rough, and I, even my artist, even my painting, my drawing here, I want it, I want little mistakes in it. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm going to change the way I'm doing my, my strokes. I want them rougher. I was scrubbing there before, kind of as you saw it. Now I'm doing these kind of chopping type... Uh, Chopping type things here. I'm not real happy with the direction of my lines. That's not what this is about yet. Again, we're underpainting this brush a little bigger I'm using my big choppy strokes illustration. I've done professional art for off at different points in my life, depending on what, what the path took me. I did medical illustration, I've done graphic design, I've done comic books, I've done a lot of stuff. Character design, storyboarding, all kinds of junk. Uh, you know, 
really need to know much more about me. You know, sir, like, not what you need to know. No, it's just not, this ain't about what. If you got questions, ask me. I'll answer them. There's nothing to hide. It's just boring. I don't like talking about that stuff. I like talking about what we're doing here. So we're getting this blocked in. We're getting our underpainting in. Uh, I want to go a little lighter for that, just so I can make my life a little easier some of this now that's good I like that color in fact I'm getting tempted here yeah we're gonna do a little bit of we're gonna do a little not that much gosh man this chick picky I think this for free this Corita is a fantastic program I mean, you really can't beat it. You know, you've, I've used Photoshop. I've used all kinds of things. You know, obviously Photoshop's going to be a better program. So is some of the Corel products. But, you know, you got to pay for those. This, you don't got to pay for. You just go download it. And you can do a lot of good, cool crap with it. Because, you know, if you want to get into this, you just, you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to break an arm and a leg. As you get better, you can improve your, you know, your art supplies and stuff like that. Um... Yeah, but you know what? I've been doing this for a long time, and the stuff that you can get for free now is as good as the professional stuff was, you know, years ago. Um, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, <laughs> because I'm not. You don't need to know how old I am. But but again, if you want to know that, ask me. That's not what this is about. Um, yeah, this stuff today. When I first started doing digital art, I mean, this Corita was better than the. Um, the the stuff I paid a couple hundred to thousand, you know, thousands. I didn't really pay thousands for anything, but um, it's better than a lot of that stuff I used that I paid money for. A lot better. And it's for free now. Nah, eh, it's not the most successful thing right here, but we're getting the idea. This is, uh, I'm going to go back and fix that in a little while. No, I'm going to go back and fix it now because if I don't, I'm going to sit here and think about it and I'm going to drive myself nuts and it's not going to be, uh, it's going to be, going to turn out badly for everybody. So we got that going. Again, if you got any questions, let me know. Probably everybody's watching WoW right now. I play WoW, but I'm just not interested in vanilla. Never have been. In fact, I remember logging into vanilla when it was first out and played it for 20 minutes and got bored. I don't like quests. I don't like them. I like doing stuff. So now when I game, I do CSGO. I am terrible at it. No, I am not good. I'm the opposite of good. But it entertains me. It keeps me yeah, It's very fun. I like to do PvP and WoW. Am I good at it? No, I'm terrible at it. But it's fun. I don't like doing dungeons. I don't like doing questing. It's too slow for me. I hate lore. Absolutely despise it. Got our underpainting. I don't want to overwork the underpainting. <laughs> oh, I gotta do a shirt. Well, we got, you know, opposite of green is red, but I don't want a green shirt. We're gonna do the can't shirt just can't stay black. We can't have a big hole here. So what we're gonna do, I think, is we're gonna pick a. Mm -hmm, we'll pick a brown, a deep brown for this. And there's a reason for that. Kind of a mid mid tone brown here. I don't want a lot of, in fact, this needs to be darker for what I'm going to be doing. Because it's not, we, we, we're not really worried about rendering the shirt. We're really kind of worried about, the shirt's just going to be kind of a placeholder more than anything. Even when we're done, we're not going to be seeing a lot of it. Again, I'm staying loose here. I don't care. In this case, I want this stuff to look raggedy. Like I said, I like that. That's my style. I don't want to over detail every bit of the picture. I leave the details for the important parts of the picture. I let the other details draw themselves. You use. You, I don't care if it's watercolor for in real life. I don't care if it's this digital stuff. I don't care what it is. You can let this your medium do a lot of the work for you. And I don't mean detailing and lens flares and 
all that crap. I mean, let it let it do its thing. Embrace. The, don't try to overly control it. Let it do what it's going to do. You know, of course, you're going to fight with it. Some of anybody doesn't have to throw some black hair. Now, you know what? I've almost got this where I want it. And his pants. I don't know. I guess it. Go for this. This has purple pants. Well, there's a reason. Purple are shadows. And we're not going to see much of his pants anyway. Because we're going to be doing something else down there. Actually, I fucking hate that, so we're going to have to switch it. We're going to do more of a. that color, just a different color, brown. No, we don't want that. That's terrible. I'm just going to go all as dark as I can. And that's fine. Here I am talking about letting it do it all its own stuff. And then I do a lot of corrections. That's okay. You you follow the rules where you want, you break the rules where you want. But the important thing is you know what they are so you know what you're breaking. And that's basically I'm just, when this gets done. Now here's the thing I wanted to show you. It's time to turn off some of these layers. see what we got. Maybe I'm going to leave this one on. Ah, that's the one I want to leave on right there. That gives me a little bit more. I don't even know what that one is. Okay. We got that. We're going to be finishing this up here in this layer. Now we're going to do some actual detailing. We got Jason's dark ass coat. Or neon green coat, but don't worry, it's not staying that color. It's going to be darker. But first and foremost, we're going to take care of that mask of his. We're going to go in for some shading now. We're going to go in for some detail. And I'm going to get. What should we do with this one? With my presets, sketch textures, erasers, digital. I'm going to use digital because we are digital. Let me see. We got a details. Now, that's horrible. Okay, we'll do this one, whatever it is. Basic, okay. Basic brush. Back it down. Back off some of the opacity. We're going to see how this works. Too big. Too small. That's right. Maybe. Let's try that. Okay. Go down a little opacity, and I'm just going to grab some extremely dark purple. Why purple? Actually, many shadows, almost all shadows in nature, have a tinge of that blue in them because of the light, the way our sky is blue. So I'm going in here and bring that brush size up a little bit. Bring my opacity down. doing super high resolution and the reason is we ain't got time for this kind of tutorial to completely do you know like a full on you know 40 hour rendering we have time for this that's going to be blended when we get our blending paper Decisions. And these shadows don't don't freak out on them. They're gonna. It all works out. You can almost see how we've got it 
going on back here already. some more of my purple. I know you guys are just freaking out. What the hell is he doing with all that damn purple? Well, I'm going to show you. Trust me. See? Starting to get some... watching what I'm doing. I am leaving. I'm not taking the shadow all the way to the edge. I'm leaving a line down there. You can see what I'm saying. You know, we got, you know what, I'm putting purple here. You know, I'm probably going to go back right back in with the black. Another mistake, I don't call it a mistake, the thing we love to do as artists is we love to get in and put the deep details and like the muscles and all this to make it look cool. Often that's not where your darkest values are. The, they're in like the most mundane places in the folds of clothes and you know other shadows that happen to move around and things like that so I'm gonna put that in here make sure I've got some separation on his sleeve and then we've got that in here okay now it's time for this the real slightly darker type stuff. I can really get in here. Bring that down a little. I'm going to start putting in the details you're wanting to see and expecting. I don't know if I can say I'm drawing Jason Voorhees or not on you know, I'm drawing character generic hockey mask killer from generic um, modern horror movie trope. And got a nice pretty jacket, kind of neon green. Got a bunch of our shit in here. Now let's put that shit up. Let's tear it up. I'm going to use, it's too bright, I'm going to use this wash, and I want to paint, and I want, where's that glazer, let's do dry brush, and I want some stanky brown, bring that guy down, 
So you really can't have his glow-in-the-dark jacket. I think that looks a little weird. Passing his way down. Because again, you see what I'm doing here. In a lot of these cases, I'm building things. I'm, I'm... I got anything? Oh, there we go. Probably need a little more opacity here. digital paint do some of this work for me. I don't like this. Find something better. This is working I'm working too hard. It's causing me to be indeliberate. There we go. And brought it back down. There we go. That's more like it. Opacity is down here. This way I can dull everything out without destroying it. And it's not dark enough. I don't want to relight things. Let's do oh, lower our opacity and let's raise our size for fun. Let's just be brave here. Take down some of them. That's better. We don't need a damn neon jacket. We need kind of an army jacket looking thing. Whenever I can mix a color, a palette for the one of our other tutorials, I'm going to show you how I'm basically going to create a palette for the whole painting based on certain things and then stick with it. Okay, we've got our basic Jason here. Almost. We're gonna do is oh, I gotta get my sketch back. There we go. Okay. Don't worry, we're gonna have some cool stuff in here. That I'm gonna use my color picker. I'm gonna do a few details. There. Color repetition is very important in art. And I want my. Let me use this glazer again. Some of these brush si sizes, I'm, or I guess shapes aren't. What the hell am I doing? Aren't exactly. Okay, I'm doing something. I don't know what I'm doing. That thing keeps popping up. It's making me mad. I guess people aren't logging into WoW for what I just read. Too bad, so sad. Go up and finish his head. I think that 
that's a decent enough color. Must be holding something wrong. What am I doing? I don't know what that is. This in the wrong one. Blank. Why? Oh, it's bueno. to a digital, where's that guy I liked? Precision. Now this is going to be important. This is where we do the good stuff, or not the good stuff, but the, the very precise parts. We'll fix that in a little bit. I'm going to do his No, there's probably somebody out there whoop, that has knows the exact configuration of all of Jason's various hockey masks. I am not that guy, and I probably won't ever be. I mean, I love the movies. I get my fan. I'm not an expert. All right. Have I said that about a lot of different things? Just trying to have a nice evening with Jason. I'm looking at a picture of him that I have, and I'm not sure how to show you. I guess I could capture the other window with it, but it's okay. Um, there's a million pictures of Jason out there on the net. This looks like this goes down here like this. We're going to beat the mask up in a little bit. I don't want that perfect. You know why? Because it's not. It's got the shit kicked out of it. Pardon my in my language. I'm going to do something a little different than what I'm looking at in that photo. Okay. There's his that. I'm going to get this guy. Because what I want to do is I plan this ahead. I'm going to color that back. Now, Capacity down here. Put uh, not that big. These reds are a little bit. Ah, that's not what. It's too much. Capacity's like down here. See, I'm taking a punch out of some of those red. 
reds there and I want to do it with my shading color okay so we've got an indication of his stuff let me take a look back here I'm gonna need some tightening up here in a minute we're gonna go back to black we're gonna go back to high opacity You know what, baby black's not what I need. I'm, there's a step here I'm thinking about. It might be time for that step, and I think it is time for that step. We're gonna do with some drawing. When you're drawing on a black background, a lot of your drawing is kind of in the reverse. Think about it in your head as reverse. Um, oh, let me get my brush. Okay, make sure our brush is a good size. Normally I'd be drawing dark lines in here, you know, to, to, to accent things, but no, not now. Since we're doing black, we're going to kind of go the opposite way. Start popping some of this in. The light's coming from the, okay, if you're looking at the screen, it's from the upper right of your screen. Be to the upper left of Jason. Start popping some of these in here. We're not going to go crazy with it. Too much is too much. I'm going to put some, just a little bit, some of his holes. We might dim these down a little bit. So you can see we're doing low res, but you just this is almost like pixel art. I mean it is pixel art technically, but saying you want to say as little as you can to get the point across. Now we've got that, let's back up. See we're starting to get we actually have some detail in there. I'm gonna back my opacity up. That sounds dirty, but it's not back up the opacity. Good, how you doing? Still streaming? Mm-hmm. Looking really good. Thank you, babe. Yeah, I'm still streaming here. So oh, sorry. Thank you. Bop, bop. Bop, bop. Okay. We're gonna do something about that light in the corner. Keep it going, baby. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do is put what's called a rim light back here. It's ah, not that much. Bring that down. You can almost see the rim light I've already got there, but I want to tighten it up a little bit. Basically, going down the other side, some of that light's shining off of them here. Now the rim light was on the opposite side of what I'm doing now. This is more of the key light. Don't worry about these terms. I'm gonna have to probably I may or may not back that down, I'm not sure. Got the key light in here. And I don't want to do too much. We get the impression. But he does need a little bit more. Let's get some black and pump in some detail down here. Shadows coming off of here. Bump up the opacity. Like I told you, our big blocks aren't always I'm bump this down here. It's okay where it's at for what I just did, but it's not gonna be okay in a second. Again, we're staying loose. The farther I go down on this jacket, the looser I want to be. I want the jacket to look raggedy. My strokes are gonna be raggedy. I'm not gonna get in there and gnaw on them and chew on the for lack of a better term, worry over the so much of the detail down here like I did in his hand. I want it rough. That's a little sloppy, but that's okay. Um, I want it pretty much like what you see. I can do 
some blending on that. And I think I need a bigger, I'm, I'm getting too detailed. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm, I'm, my brush is too small and I'm overthinking it. So I just want this. I want it, let it do the work for me. I need one a little bigger. farther I go down the darker I'm going to be just because it's a decision artistic decision here okay we got that now I'm not sure we'll go down here to where his hands were now look at this oh, that was impressive there there we go there's where I did a sketch of his hands before this is what's wonderful about digital media versus regular media is you can get away with some of this hiding and, and high-end and buy-in stuff um, in fact, I don't think, I don't remember if he wears gloves or not. Let's say he doesn't. I'm going to take and I'm going to put it, well, I'm not sure what color I want his hands. They're going to be dark anyway because you're not going to be able to see too much because they're down here in that shadow. We'll block in the color. And I don't want it that big. Since this isn't, like I said, 40 hour tutorial we're going to basically do as much as we can with what we have tonight for the time this is where his I'm going to block this in right now I'm just kind of scrubbing this in because I don't want to I'm not sure I, have, I still have decisions to make and I should have made those decisions before that's okay. Let's do this. Let's before we get too far down that road, so I don't forget what I'm doing. Yeah. Great, Mark. Pick that up. Get something dark. There you go. And I want low opacity. see the bottom of that finger and this was going to be kind of like this we're going to put a line for his knuckles back here coming up and we don't want you see how it looks like a hand you back off it looks like a hand this is what's called indicating you don't have to render every single thing you can indicate meaning you can just kind of look at it well back up it's a hand. You come in here, it's that. You can draw trees the same way. You can draw anything you want. Indicating is a powerful tool. And it's also useful in saving you time. And, uh, oh. Especially in a quicker demonstration like this. If I was doing this, you know, spending and making a really fully detailed painting, I wouldn't necessarily do as much indicating. I would plan things out. I would know exactly what my, I should say exactly. You never want to know exactly what you're going to that just turns into paint by numbers. I would have more time. I would make more other decisions. And I wouldn't have to indicate. Or should, well, I would. I mean, I would indicate, but be more careful about it. Right now, I'm just kind of blocking this in. And for those of you who see that blue sketch is a layer behind. And this hand doesn't... One of the worst things you can do when you're something like this... Let's take a look. It might look like shit, but... Yeah, we gotta get our darks in there. Is when you are drawing a hand like this, it's so easy to overdraw it. Okay, you can come in here, and you know you can just you can worry on every detail and get it over. Try and something like this when you're doing a dis more of a distant. We're not worried about you know it's not a rendering of his hands. Again, we're indicating. I'm gonna throw this in here. It's gonna be darker down here. Like this is all gonna be kind of like that main details there let's see what we get probably gonna look a little muddy that's okay I'm gonna fix that I can fix it I got a good set of tools I can fix it I'm gonna use the eraser we don't, ah look at the size of that damn thing Good enough. 
enough for now for what we're doing. Okay, so he's got his nasty green coat. He's got his foot. Let's get. I can't remember Krita. If we sit, we're centering it, I'm sure there's a center command that I forgot because I always forget those hotkeys. But we just about got our Jason picture here. Oh no, we got to draw his. Uh, let's put in his blade. Once again, we don't. I don't like overdrawing. Um, Let's do something interesting with it. Let's let's go over here to our brush presets. You can see down here. I'm going to grab uh, some ink, an ink brush, and I'm going to do. No, that's not the one I want. I wanted a. No, I don't want that either. I want a, a marker. I know I've got them. see it and that's kind of boring. We'll then to do this. Okay, let me do that. Oh look at that. 135. Alrighty. Okay. Ooh, that's good. We're gonna try to stick with that. We try to make this kind of interesting choice here. Now I'm not using my sketch brush. I am using my mouse and a line tool because I want to see what this looks like. I don't know what this is going to look like and I think it'd be fun to find out. Boom. <laughs> I like it. Hang on a sec. That's cool. I don't know if it's photorealistic. I don't care if it is, but we're going to make it a little bigger. I like that. That's fun. That's one of the cool things about doing art because you get to discover shit. Okay, we're gonna that's gonna be the what well, our working version of our blade here. And I'm gonna grab that. Come in here. Now it's like what I said before, you let oh god. You let a lot of this stuff do the work for you. Just like in real media, same thing in digital media. You let it do some of the work for you. Now it's different in digital media nowadays because people are using it um you know, the lens flares, the modeling, the shading, a lot of that, you have built-in techniques for that that used to take us conventional artists a long time to do. Still, you can, I mean, conventional artists still use them. Um, used to take us a longer time to do them. Now they're kind of done for you. But so, once those problems are solved, you can solve other problems. Now, why is this not... I got my brush. Oh. Pump this up. Leave that line. Oh, okay. There we go. Now it's cooperating. Let's see what that looks like without the. That needs to flare a little more. To look like a machete. Now we like to draw blades all nice and shiny and impressive and make them the center of attention, but you ever look at them in movies and like that? Rarely do they look like that. Rarely do they. They say, look at some old med medieval paintings. They're going to look like, um, I like that a lot. <laughs> it's just rough. For this, for this tutorial, for this demonstration, it's just exactly what I wanted. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some, bump the opacity down. I'm going to grab this. I'm having a lot of fun with this accident here. guy run it right here ow oh, great what did I do wrong let's try it again what am I doing now 
this isn't doing what I want it to do. That's okay. I'm going to make it do what I want it to do. It looks like this is really pressure dependent, which is okay. And some of these tools, there's a lot of tools in these things, and you, it takes you a long time to master them all. See, now we got a blade. We got a kind of a cool looking blade. I got to bring this edge down a little more. And make that darker back there. Let's see what we got here. I might not even draw the handle in. No, we got to. There's a little bit of an incongruency down there. What I mean by an incongruency is if you see down here by his right hand, I've got a problem with the blade of the knife. It doesn't look like it's where it belongs. It looks like the hand and the blade aren't really what they should be. And that's um, an incongruency, I guess, is what I would call it. Basically, don't look right. Nope. I love this brush and I hate this brush. I want to do something different. This mean. I'm going to have to grab another one because this is going to take a half an hour to just do that one bit. We'll just do this nice clean marker. I'm going to be lazy. It's a piece of shit. I don't even know what that is. I don't know how I'm doing that. Hey. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Um, opacity. Blah, blah. Okay, grab that. I want the green here because what I'm going to do is I need this to go basically like that. Okay, that's not quite perfect. That's okay, but what I'm going to do now is grab this. Now we're going to grab that color, and then I'm going over. This is the color picker. It looks like a little eyedropper. Okay, it's a little eyedropper, and then you can take that eyedropper and pick a color, and then you're painting with that color. And like this, it's really helpful when you're doing stuff like this because you get to, you know, you don't have to worry about remixing it or anything like that. So now I've got the blade looking a lot more like it belongs in his hand. And um, even though his, his fingers are kind of down here a little bit, I'm going to just gonna, I'm gonna do a little cheat a little bit. It's like he's loose handling it. He's not quite Count Dooku or anything, but with that curved lightsaber blade is what I was thinking of. I'm going to grab that black, bump down this opacity. Again, I'm getting kind of cheating here. Move that up a little bit. We're going to give ourselves just a touch of just something to see. And then I'm going to fix it with this color because I went over my line. And now I'm really overworking the details. And normally I wouldn't do that, not because I want to be detailed, but when I have something like that that's an incongruency, I don't like it and I don't want to leave it there. So let's do our finishing touches up here. This is a we could go in and do a lot more detail but we're gonna do this we're gonna get ourselves we've got our hot spot highlights and what I mean by the hot spot highlights are these really bright ones you see up on the right side of Jason's head and kind of over here and all that those are the main highlights these are what we I did that, that way so that would stick out now I'm gonna basically get a color like a lighter tan here and I'm gonna finish a few other things and what I'm gonna do with that is um, Put in some more lights, make them a little bit, little more realistic, and it's going to kind of be my. Oh, that's too much. Hang on a second. And it's not the right color. And I want less opacity, less size, so I can actually scrub on it. So this is what we're going to get. Is we're going to do a few more of these guys. I don't want quite that big. All right. So, and then, kind of. Yeah, it's not. I don't got enough brush stroke on there. That's just too round. Um, I think we'll do... I'm going to make a decision here. Um, let's do a bristle brush. Oh, gosh, I don't like... That's one thing I'm not liking about this Karita is... And I guess we'll stick with this. We're going to do this pencil. I don't like this about the Karita is I don't like the way they have the pre-shaped brushes but there are worse things in the world so now I can there there we go now see where these I'm, I'm choosing this is it 
it follows I can it can use a pressure stroke kind of thing that other brush I had wasn't really good with pressure it was just kind of blobbing now, I'm being careful here I don't want to do overdo this it's not what we're here to do you can easily overwork a detail and that's not what you want I'm just kind of picking and choosing where I want these. It's going to make it look good. And I'm not going to go too far down on his body because I want the focus of the drawing up here near his head. This is going to be a comic style, I guess. Penciling. Not really penciling, but using this kind of color. Now what I'm going to do is bump this way back because I'm going down into here into his shirt. Well, man, I hate this. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to figure it out now. I'll figure it out later when you guys don't have to watch me spend two hours working with this thing. Now I can go in here and do a little, a little less opacity. I don't like that line. The line offends me. That one's okay. That one, mm, that one almost offends me. But I won't report it to Twitch. Okay. Do this here. I'm gonna put in some. I'm gonna get some bigger ones. The last thing I want is all my lines to be the same size, same width. I want variety in there. If I was taking a little more time, I'd actually try to indicate some of his muscle structure. Not like comic book muscle structure, but just uh, more like the, his, his chest and that kind of thing. Um, get on down here. And I'm going to do one last thing that I've been thinking of the entire drawing. We'll see how this works because I'm a little bit I'm excited. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go it's on this last layer. Okay. I'm going back here. Watch this trick. This is one thing you can do with digital that you can't do with other stuff. You see what I'm doing? Putting his head back there. This has kind of been the thing I've been waiting to do the whole time. Not why I shouldn't say that. Waiting to try. Putting Jason's head. I used that layer even after I was done drawing to put his head in there. And now I'm going to put... Yes. Sorry for the profanity. I don't know what that is, and I'm going to kill it one of these days. Pop that opacity up. guy some pink I'm gonna zoom in because I don't really necessarily want his 
want that line that blurry. go now you got yourself a Jason for now short and dirty tutorial we'll do some more later but before we go um, I just thought of one cool thing I want to do that I've done before this is a lot of fun this is gonna be the fun part I'm going down here to my textures I love this texture I've used it before for this very purpose. It doesn't need to be 80. Yeah, maybe it needs to be bigger. Yeah, let's do this. Take the opacity way down. Should be a red. go now you got a picture eh. I think that eh. here we go Jason um, I'm gonna save it is Jason Karita and then I'm gonna sign it if I can that brush. I don't know. Find a brush here. You have to watch me sign the stupid thing. Okay. I'll sign it right down here. Good enough? Alright, guys. Thanks. You guys have a good evening, and we'll be back at some other point with more horror uh, tutorials and whatnot. Um, we're going to do the horror show on Saturday night. I'll do more drawing tutorials. We'll do other things. We might even be gaming tonight. Totally unrelated to horror, but I hope you guys had a good time. And we will see you later. Adios from the Horror Cult, Neon Wrangler, and Mrs. Neon Wrangler.